Located in the Rocky Mountains at the base of the Rampart Range, we're in Colorado Springs for today's game. And now the coin toss, and it's presented by Nissan. Innovation that excites. USC has been waiting all week for this one. Get ready, folks. The opening kickoff is finally here. Nice kick, plenty of distance. This one's going to be down in the end zone for a touchback. The quarterback brings his troops out onto the field for the first drive of the game. On the ground, and he won't get back to the line. Never really had a shot. They were on him almost as soon as he took the handoff. From their own 24-yard line, it's second down. He's tackled at about the 21. That's a loss of three yards on the play. Throws and it's incomplete. That's going to bring up fourth down. The defense held their ground on that play. The quarterback just wasn't able to find any open receivers. These special teams have done it before, blocking punts. It looks like they're coming after this one. USC's coaching staff, they know they've got a star wide receiver. They know it's going to be a hostile environment. With that, we went to practice this week, Kirk. They had the crowd noise pumped up pretty good getting them ready for this game. Yeah, they've done everything that they can do to get this offense ready for a tough environment. They had the crowd noise all week long, making it tough to communicate for the quarterback and his receivers. Now it's here. Now it's the game. And we'll see if all that preparation pays off. One thing we know for sure, they want to get the football into the hands of this receiver early and often if they want to win this game. They're about four yards away here on second down. And he is drilled at the 33. Boy, when you can rely on your tight end to move the chains, you got a big time advantage over any defense. First down. He's on the run, and he has it on the corner. Decides to slide. That brings him second and five. From the 28-yard line. Second down. And he's taken down at the 17-yard line. If you can consistently run effectively like this, it'll force the defense to pay more attention to the run. And that creates chances in the play-action passing game. He goes out of bounds at the 14-yard line. From the 14-yard line, second down. Pulls down the catch, and he's got room here. He steps out around the nine-yard line. We've played one quarter. Still no score. Set to resume action here in the second quarter, and we've got a tight ball game. Gets out to about the nine-yard line. That was some sure tackling to make sure he didn't pick up the first down. Fourth down, and the offense is still on the field.
yards across the middle. He's hit and taken down. Oh, that was a big conversion. You could just see the other team's offense itching to get back on the field. Watch out for a pass play when you're in a goal line D. Touchdown, USC! This is what an offensive lineman hopes for. An opportunity to impose his will on the defense. And he tacks on the extra point. So a nine-play, 55-yard drive, and it results in a touchdown. Brad, I thought the offense did a really nice job of mixing up the play calling on that drive. I thought the defense was on its heels most of the drive because of the versatility of the offense. And it goes into the end zone, down for a touchback. Both offenses have played it pretty close to the vest so far in this one. Yeah, because they've been so conservative, it's made it pretty easy for both of these defenses to be pretty dominant. You see an offense open it up and take a few chances. In a game that's this close, you can't afford to waste possessions. He's going to try and scramble. And he's going to come up with a sack. You know, the quarterback, I think, could have done a better job with a pre-snap read to be able to see and recognize the blitz. That way, he could have communicated and maybe adjusted the protection up front. That time, a miscommunication by the offensive lineman against the blitz freed up the defensive line to get the pressure on the quarterback. That was a great call. Yeah, here you see the draw play at its best. The tailback got good blocking up front and was able to pick up a bunch of yards. From their own 40-yard line, first down. And down he goes, around the 45-yard line. The Falcons use their second timeout. Gets it out quickly to the back, but he can't haul it in. From their own 45-yard line, it's third down. Makes the catch and look out. Got down at the 49. This is a big first down for this offense. I think it's another good example about how important it is to have an awareness about who's a wide receiver. The wide receiver did a really good job of knowing exactly where the first down marker was, and he made sure to get the route at least to that point, so when he made the catch and got hit, he had the first down. Pressured and brought down. Gets it, he's in space. Tackle around the 36 yard line. Steps out of bounds at about the 29 yard line. Tenth play of the drive. So we'll probably get one last heave to the end zone here before halftime. This one's going deep to the end zone. This one will fall incomplete. Low scoring first half of play, but a close game. The Trojans lead 7-0. Hi, everybody. Glad to have you with us on the EA Sports NCAA Football 14 Halftime Show presented by Nissan. Innovation that excites. Bruce Davis, David Pollock here in the studio as always to lend a little perspective to what just went down in the first 30 minutes. So far, so good for both offenses in terms of taking care of the football, but now the defenses are ramping up the sense of urgency in terms of trying to get the ball back for their offense. Uh, absolutely. And you got to find Reese. These ball hawks on defense, they need to find the football. They need to make some big plays, create some turnovers. How about using that hit stick a little bit? How about knocking somebody silly and making them drop the football? I mean, 
Defense's number one priority is trying to turn the football over, try to make a big explosive play for your offense so, so they can do more damage and they can take the ball down the field. So those ball hawks need to show themselves in the second half. That's going to do it at halftime, just about ready to start the second half. All right, you finish it up, brother. I'm going to get something in the cafeteria. I'm hungry. But, look, wait, don't leave until you get my order. Brad Kirk, take the second half. All right, Reese and David, welcome back, everybody. Just about set to start the second half. He's to the 20, and he's taken down at the 26-yard line. So they're just about set to get the game going again. USC is up by a touchdown. Here's the pitch, left side. And they get nice yardage on that run. That's a team of four. That makes it second and six. Second and six. Ball on their own 30. He makes his way to about the 38. Gain of eight yards. First down. Give to the tailback. Runs it right. Nice pickup. Second down, and they're going to need about three yards to pick up the first down. Just throws this one away. Him hard at the 47 yard line. <laughs> Booming kick. This one will go into the end zone and they'll bring it out to the 20. This deficit can be easily overcome, sure. But they have to be thinking if they don't get something going on this series, the burden is going to be felt by their defense. Gets out to about the 21. That's good for a gain of one yard. That brings us second and nine. Ball on the 21. Tackle made around the 29-yard line. That's three down and one to go. USC's lead is a touchdown. Welcome back to the action here as we resume play here in quarter number four. Just under two to go in the game. Ready! 180! 180! We're still early in the fourth quarter, but that was a huge stop. And now with the lead, they're going to get the football back and an opportunity to stretch the lead. Got to be careful of a pass play with this defense. He's to the 40. And he's tackled the 49-yard line. We've got a first and 10. Ball on the 49. He's scrambling, and they get the sack. That's a loss of seven yards. That'll make it second and long. 
scrambling around. And they bring him down for a sack on the play. You can't take sacks like that as a quarterback. He just can't. If you can't find a receiver, get out of the pocket and throw the ball away. So the sack makes this third and very long. Well, after that injury, we'll get to see the backup quarterback here. Throws it deep. No, incomplete. He airs it out. And they make the stop at the 22-yard line. This defense better change their attitude. they got to know by now that this offense isn't going to be complacent at all. So they better start playing with a little bit more energy themselves. Under a minute left. Throws to the tight end, and that ball is incomplete. And this is the 10th play of the drive. He's scrambling. He lost the ball, and they fall on the loose ball. What was most impressive is how he followed the play, and he just didn't give up on it. It was that effort that allowed him to come away with the fumble. A score here might effectively end this one. Bring him down at about the 31. Eight yards on the counter there. It's second down, and they're about two yards away from the sticks. Good open field tackle. You like to see a team having success like this running the football. It can really open up things for the offense. And this should be a kneel down as they just try to kill the clock. Takes a knee. The Trojans coaching staff, Kirk, do they start wondering, hey, uh, are we going to have trouble with our star player after the struggles he had today? Well, I think the coaching staff's got to be happy That's that this team was able to win the football the game and overcome the fact that their star player didn't have a great game. But I think making no adjustments and changing the game plan because their star didn't deliver, I think that would be a big mistake. That brings this broadcast to a close. For EA Sports and Kirk Herbstreet, I'm Brad Nessler. We'll see you soon for another edition of NCAA Football 14.